I have two stores. Um, we did 5.7K. I'm gonna try. Really quick, before this video starts, I wanna let you know that you have the chance to win $150. I will literally Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, I don't care, I'll wire you the money. But here's how you win. Somewhere in this video, there's going to be two codes, right? At two points in the video, there's going to be two separate codes. Each code is going to have four characters. They could be numbers or they could be letters. What you guys have to do is you have to watch the video and look out for these codes. They could be anywhere in the corners, any colors. Uh, and then you have to email me both codes in order that you saw them, right? Um, so as long as you catch both codes and send me an email, the first person that sends me the correct email with the correct codes, I will call you or whatever and I will send you $150. You could spend it on ad money, you could spend it on a computer monitor, you could spend it on a bottle of Dom Perignon and you can get drunk with it. I really don't care, but 150 bucks uh, and yeah, all you have to do is watch the video pretty much. Uh, and you have a chance. So guys, I put a lot of time and effort in this video. I just finished uh, editing it and wrapping it up. Uh, it's a great video. The first 10 minutes are for more beginner friendly, um, but there is a part in the first 10 minutes where I go over um, how to not get your Facebook ad account banned based on my theory and what I've noticed in the last six months. So maybe you wanna stick around for that, but towards the last half of the video is where we really get into strategy. But either way, if you wanna catch the codes, watch the whole thing. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, thank you so much for joining me. If you clicked on this video, I guarantee you that this video is going to be well worth your while. Um, as you guys know, the last two videos I posted have done really well, um, a combined almost 300,000 views in two videos. So um, I think that the long form videos with a lot more information is really what you guys seem to like. So that's what I'm gonna keep coming with. This time we're doing Facebook ads. So I'm gonna break down my whole Facebook strategy. Um, I spent about a day making this presentation and I put a decent amount of work into it. So I think that you guys are really gonna actually take something away from this and learn something. Uh, and even if you're running Facebook ads right now, maybe it can help you some way, shape or form become a little bit more profitable um, so yeah guys definitely get cozy I'm assuming it's gonna be about 30 minutes or longer um, so get some hot chocolate get some popcorn almonds if you're trying to be healthy um, you know Netflix can wait whatever you're watching on YouTube can wait um, just I would get comfy and let's just go through this next 30 to 40 minutes together because these are gonna be some valuable minutes and honestly I think you will really learn a lot first thing I want to mention is the first two slides are gonna be just Facebook terms um, and some of it's gonna be beginner, some of it's not. So just stick with me. Honestly, I think you should just watch the entire video and I think it'll be well worth it. So let's just go over some of the brief things for the beginners that don't exactly know what this is. And then as we go on, we'll get more and more advanced. Things you should know um, right away, just if you wanna do Facebook ads, you need to know these. Uh, the pixel. So. Facebook has this thing, it's called a pixel, right? Um, and the pixel is a very, very smart AI algorithm that tracks data points off Facebook's platform. So if somebody purchases something off your store and your pixel is connected to your store, uh, Facebook's gonna be able to track who that person was, uh, is and it has a profile of that person. And so it's it's good because it can track people and so it finds out who's interested in, in your stuff. It, it basically makes running ads a lot cheaper and easier because it's just smart. Um, optimization. Optimization is uh, doesn't occur until you get 50 conversions, whatever you're optimizing for, conversions per week. Um, and optimization, it, it, all it does is it's basically Facebook saying, okay, once we're optimized, the fluctuations are going to be less consistent. So it's going to be a more consistent um, metrics like cost for purchase or whatever the amount of purchases you're getting. It's just going to be more consistent than before. And so optimization is a goal because otherwise your ads are going to be super volatile and you won't be able to scale uh, because some days you'll lose money or make more, who knows. But anyway, moving on, uh, Facebook owns Instagram. So whenever you see ads on Instagram, most likely those are coming from people running ads on Facebook. Uh, campaigns, ad sets, and ads. So it structured, it's structured like this. It goes campaigns, ad sets, and then ads. Within one campaign, you have multiple ad sets or one ad set. And within those ad sets, you have one or more ads. So when you create a campaign, it's basically like, what is your overall goal? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to get leads? Are you trying to get sales? Are you trying to get people to watch your video? Are you trying to get people to know who you are? And then your ad sets, is how you're gonna go about achieving that goal. So it's who you're gonna target, it's gonna be your budget if you're doing ad set budget, it's going to be um, your location of targeting, it's going to be your conversion window, uh, and then ads are gonna be the actual physical 
ads that you're going to show to those people in the ad set level for the goal at the campaign level. So you can have multiple ads per ad set um, and those ads could be different angles, different offers, different discounts, so on and so forth. Um, so CBO, ABO, and LTB. CBO is campaign budget optimization. That is basically the data is stored in the campaign level and it's scaled and optimized at the campaign level. It has been working really well for me lately. Uh, ad set budget level is the old traditional Facebook where you give a, uh, a budget to each individual ad set uh, and it's scaled, optimized there. Um, and then LTB is lifetime budget. That is you give a campaign or ad set a lifetime budget. So it's basically saying, okay, I'm only going to spend, I'm only going to let you spend $1,000 um, for however long you think you should spend it, or you could give it an end date too. So $1,000 in the next 30 days, but LTB means lifetime budget. Okay, audiences. Audiences is basically any group of people that tell Facebook to make for you. So if you have a website and your pixels installed and you have a thousand purchases, uh, and you go into the audience section and you make a purchase 30, which is all the people that purchased on your website in the last 30 days, that's an audience. So with audiences, you could create retargeting campaigns, you could create lookalike audiences, uh, and it's just a very valuable, pretty obvious, easy to understand term that you should know. Cold, warm, and hot traffic. Cold traffic is when people are interacting with your brand for the first time, no consideration. They just found out who you were, so they're not, you know, you don't exist in their head a lot yet. Warm traffic is consideration. Um, it's like interest, maybe not consideration, that's a little more down the line, but like interest, they know who you are, you know, they're on the product page, they're reading a blog, looking at a review. Hot traffic is people that are ready to buy, you just have to push them over the edge. Uh, and have them buy and they're just ready to go. They're thinking about it. They're waiting you know, for the right time. They're waiting for the right discount. Uh, people that are just interested, adding to cart, initiating checkout, stuff like that. Interest targeting is basically using Facebook platform and their interests that they provide and targeting people based on a common interest uh, within that platform. Uh, LLA one through 10%. So a lookalike audience is basically when you take an audience, a core audience, that you make on Facebook, for example, a thousand people that purchased, and then you make a lookalike audience based on that core audience. Uh, and then what Facebook will do, it, it will go out and find uh, people in whatever country you tell it to, in the United States, for example, um, that have one or more things in common with the core audience. So uh, the smaller the percentage, the more things in common the, and the better, the, more, the higher quality the audience is. And then as you go up in percentages, the less things that you know, they'll have in common, the less relevant the 2 million people that Facebook feeds back to you is to the original core 1000 people. So uh, funny enough, the higher percentages have been working incredibly well lately. Um, but what I've noticed is that the lower percentages are good long term and the higher percentages are, are good short term, but not so good long term. Uh, I hope you understand that. Uh, demo targeting. So when you're doing demo targeting, you're you're trying to reach people based on demographics. So, you know, people 18 to 24 years old, um, you know, men, only men, if it's a product that men only buy, but even women buy for men. So, uh, or women, like if it's a, a product that a girl is only going to buy people 55 plus, if you're targeting older people, uh, people that make $50,000 a year or more. So that's demographic targeting. Uh, ad spend with credit card. Don't make this mistake. I made the mistake very briefly. I have friends that have spent over a hundred thousand dollars on debit cards, right? Six figures in ad spend on debit cards and they've completely lost out. Now there's two reasons you need a credit card. Um, first of all, it builds credit. Second of all, it's good for ca cash flow. So if you're spending on a debit card and this, this is just going in and out of your bank, the thing is when you start to scale, it's going to be hard because your merchants, right? Like even if you're using Shopify payments, which is the worst or PayPal, it's going to take a few days for the sales fr from the previous day to get into your account. So you need credit cards for cash flow because if you're spending $5,000 a day on Facebook, the billing threshold is only $900 and you're going to get billed like five, six times per day. And if you're using a debit card, that's coming straight out of your account, right? But the money that you made that day is not going to be in your account yet. Um, so that could pose a major, major problem. So you need a credit card for cash flow purposes. You need to let the money build up and then the credit card builds up and then you pay it off and then it builds up and then you pay it off. 
Uh, and also you rack up a ton of points, um, like a ungodly amount of credit card points, depending obviously on how much you're spending. But I have the uh, business AMX gold right here. So the business AMX gold is 4X on ad spend for hundred up to $150,000 spent per year uh, and it actually gives you forex points on the top two categories so it could be like software which shopify is software all the apps um literally all soft business software travel ad spend like that that card is like one of my all-time best uh, or the chase inc so those are the two cards i'd recommend the business gold if you can get approved for it and the chase inc um, or the Freedom Unlimited if you're like just starting out. That's more of a beginner card. Chase Freedom Unlimited. Uh, and points are free ad spend. So if I spend $150,000 a year with that card and I get 4X points, that's 600,000 points. That's 6,000 in free flights. That's literally a round trip flight to Paris um, like six times, right? No, more than that because they're like 700 bucks, I think. But like you could literally, go, you could literally travel the world for free. Um, avoid getting ad accounts banned. So this is my theory. I have not had an ad account banned in like six months. And I think it's because of something I started doing. Now it's just theory. It's what I think works. So test it out for yourself. Basically, the more information you give Facebook, because Facebook does not like dropshippers, like literally they don't care about you. Dropshippers spend a very, very minuscule portion of Facebook's budget. Um, and so honestly, they could really F off because they screw out a lot of customers on Facebook anyway. And Facebook does not like that. P Facebook wants people to continue to buy off their platform. So they don't like dropshippers which is why they're getting so like getting down on them with like the feedback score, whatever I'm getting off topic, but um, avoid getting banned by giving Facebook as much information as possible to give Facebook the illusion that you're not drop shipping. Um, when in reality you are <laughs> no, but um, make an LLC, upload your EIN, verify your business, um, put your address. Uh, if you have a phone number that you want to use, you can purchase a phone number through Zendesk or, or whatever and have a phone number. Just basically any blank space on Facebook in the business manager and on the Facebook page, fill it in with information of any sort. Put in pictures, logos, just like the store hours, just any possible information, fill it in. Give Facebook as much information about you and your business as you possibly can. And I truly believe because so far it's been worked for me that you will have a much less chance of getting banned. I've never gotten banned um, so far in the last six months since I've done that. So that's theory, try it out. Last thing, good days and bad days. Facebook, unfortunately, there will always be good days and there will always be bad days. Even when your ads are fully optimized, before they're optimized, it's worse. Once they're optimized, it's much better. Um, but there will be good days and there will be bad days. There's nothing you can do to fight it. Some days will be very profitable. Some days will be barely profitable or negative. And then there's going to be average days where things are just okay. Um, and the thing you have to understand is there's going to be a mean, there's going to be a line in between the fluctuation of good and bad days. And you need to, you need to identify the line and, and recognize that that's what you're working with. So if you have a 20% margin some days and a 3% or no, that's a bad example. Let's, let's say you have like a 15% margin on your good days and like a 3% margin on your bad days. Like that's that first of all, that's pretty volatile. That's a uh, 12%, right? That it can go that in between those that you can go up and down. So the thing you have to understand is if, if it's, you're cutting it that close, if you're going to scale and you hit a bad day, the first day that you scale that, or you increase the budget $200, you could go negative. You could go negative one day and, and you know, you just don't want to do that. So, uh, my point is, is there's going to be good days and be bad days and you kind of have to average it out. So if you have, you know, like I said, 15 and then three, you have to kind of find the average, which would be like 8%. I don't know. Yeah. Like 8%. Um, and you have to work with that, right. And assume that that's what you're going to have. That's your actual profit. So anyway, uh, moving on. The last thing I'm going to say before I actually get started is, uh, I'm not a Facebook genius. My strategy is not the only one that works. I'm constantly learning, learning new things every day. I learned something new today about Facebook ads. Um, I haven't been doing it for 10 years. Like some people have, uh, and I'm just here to help you guys. I'm, I'm not telling you that in order to be successful that you need to go do this right now. Um, but I am telling you, um, I, that this is, these are things that worked for me. Um, these are tips and tricks that I've basically taken from other people and tested out myself and they have proved worthy. Um, so I'm going to show you a quick screenshot. It's not anything crazy whatsoever. It's just my story yesterday. Uh, and we did on this store, 
I have two stores. Um, we did 5.7K. I'm going to try to 5.76K yesterday on the store. And really, this it's not a big number. It's not a big flex at all. Um, the reason we didn't do more, the reason I'm showing you the screenshot is because we're still building the foundation and we're rebuilding the foundation for that store, which is something I'll talk about later in the video. Um, I could have easily pumped that number up to 20, 30, 40 K in one day. Like I'm totally capable of doing that and it's not hard, but it's not going to be profitable if you don't build the foundation and it's kind of like playing on thin ice. Um, but I'm going to explain about the foundation and, and I'm going to, you guys are going to understand that a little bit later. Um, so let's move on. I'm going to quickly go over this top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, basically cold, warm, hot, you know, top of funnels, they're interacting with you for the first time. Middle of funnel is, um, they're considering, you know, they're thinking about it. They're like, okay, it's kind of cool. Bottom of funnel is like, they are ready to convert. So just some terms, uh, pre Facebook ads and front end. So before you spend money on Facebook ads, you want to make sure that anything you can do before is, is as good as it possibly can be so that your dollar spent on Facebook goes longer, right? It's a longer way and it's essentially going to just be as effective as possible because you did everything before. So examples like source speed, you want to make sure your store is good. You want to make sure your images are compressed and resized and you want to make sure your score is like above a 50 at least because otherwise your bounce rate is going to be super high and you want to have a bounce rate under 20% if you possibly can under 25%. Make sure your Instagram is good. Make sure you got content on your store. Make sure your supply chain is good. Make sure your shipping times are good. Make sure your product is good, right? Before you spend all this money on Facebook, make sure you're good to go um, and stop worrying about trying to make a quick profit. I promise you, you're gonna be able to spend money a week later if you just take an extra week to do all your due diligence and make sure that your front end is good. You should have three to five creatives you want to test with different aspect ratios, uh, aspect ratios the size one to one is square, four to five is like half of a TikTok. TikTok is like nine sixteen. Um, so you want to have different creatives with different aspect ratios because the first part of Facebook is testing creatives. Creatives should not be up alley unless they are good AF quality. Um, don't use shitty watermark videos. You're not going to make money. Like we all know this. Don't be a dumbass. Uh, people like to borrow creatives from competitors to validate products can sell before investing in their own creative. So this is a very common thing. I'm guilty of this. I've done it before. Um, a lot of people do it. They borrow a creative from someone else. And then if, you know, for three, four days, if they're making a lot of sales and maybe even profitable, they're like, okay, obviously the product is, is decent. I can sell it with the angle. I'm going to invest in creative. That's probably the best way to do it. I'm not telling you to steal content. I'm just saying that's what people do. Um, let's talk about ads for a second. If you want to really make sure that your ads are going to be as good as possible and as profitable, profitable as possible. That's less done on the Facebook side, more done on your business front end side. So let me explain. Um, this is the first time people interact with your business when you, when you show them the ad, right? So first impressions are incredibly important, first of all. Um, and you can ultimately increase your ROAS on the front end. And, and just enjoy and reap the, the benefits on the back end. So this the front end is the Facebook page, the Instagram page, your ads, your offers. Uh, and let me give you guys an example to help you understand. So say you have a thousand people that are interested in a certain product, okay? And you have an ad um, with the product and you made it in your backyard and your brother filmed it, right? Uh, and it's, it's, it's an okay ad, it's decent. You can tell it was made at home. You show the thousand people that ad and how many people are gonna convert, like 10? 20 maybe, right? Uh, 25, uh, who knows? It just depends on what the product is, whatever. My point is, let's say you put in an extra week of time and some more money, right? And you hire two actors, uh, you have a narrator, you um, give a longer form video with more benefits, you come up with the uh, offers better and more enticing, um, and you just go the extra mile. Now you show that extra polished, nice ad to the same thousand people. And how many do you think are going to buy the product that they're interested in, right? Like 50, 60, 70. And so even though we're doing the same targeting with the same Facebook ad strategy with the same everything, um, we're going to have a much higher ROAS, a much higher ROAS. And we didn't do anything in the Facebook section. It's all done on the front end. So that's why the ads in the beginning, the, the front end are so important because you can ultimately just change your entire business if you do it right. So I'm going to show you guys the three ads before we go to the strategy overview. Uh, and we're going to start with this one here. Um, so this is for a product. Um, 
let's see, it starts here. So check this out. Okay, I'm not gonna say anything about it. I'm just gonna show you the next one. It's a different ad for the same product. Powerful enough to crush ice. Quiet enough for a library. <laughs> Wild enough for a party. Fast enough to fuel you. Light enough to travel anywhere. It's amazing for making perfectly blended protein shakes right at the gym. <laughs> Yum. You can charge with any USB port. It even cleans itself. We offer free worldwide shipping. With over 100,000 customers in 195 countries, Blendjet is top rated with 4.9 stars from over. Oh, you guys get the picture. So obviously there's a major difference and obviously one of those ads is gonna perform much better. Uh, and it's the second one for the simple reason that they put in way more effort. You saw the product in different scenarios. You saw people, different people, different actors using the product. They gave way more benefits. There was a narration, which it made it, you know, it made it easier for the reader because they didn't have to read, they just listened and it's easier to listen than to read. Um, and they narrated all the benefits and why they should get it and how easy, how much, life, how much easier it makes life. And ultimately that's why that second ad probably has way more views. That's why the company Blendjet made way more money than the company before is because of the way that they presented themselves to everybody and which was a way better. And that's why they won. That ad had 2.5 million views. Two point, they can say that every million views is about 40,000 in revenue, a general rule of thumb. So there you go, that's 100,000 in revenue from one ad. And they just put in a little bit more effort and they're probably way more profitable too. I'm going off on a tangent, but you guys need to understand that uh, most of Facebook ads is done, it's not just the ads, there's a lot that goes into it um, that you can do better. Um, so let's go over and start talking about the strategy overview that you should be doing for Facebook ads now that we got all that stuff out of the way. So actually really quickly before we go into the strategy overview, I wanted to show you guys another ad just because of how amazing it is. Uh, this is something that you guys could set as a goal, you know, look forward to. I've personally never invested in an ad uh, this complex, um, but if you have the business and it's making the money, uh, at some point this could be an actual viable option for you. So I'm gonna show you guys this ad from the Hypervolt, and you guys got a quick look at all those amazing products I save on my phone. But this is a, a ad from like the Thayer gun, the th you know, the gun that helps your muscles. Um, just watch this. Keep fluids moving through the body. Nothing in the human body is meant to stay still. And that really opened up our eyes to this idea that vibration and percussion could change the physiology of the body and change the way we move. That led us to experiment with developing a device that directly applied percussion to the body. And that became the Hypervolt. Yeah, it looks like a fucking transformer. In a living human being, there's a... So obviously, ads like that, like... It's not even necessarily that they're going to sell a lot of your product, but people, when they see that and they, they associate your brand with that level of like seriousness and like effort, like it's just, they're gonna take you so much more seriously. And it's, it's just better for lifetime value of your brand and for all your customers. The people just appreciate that way more consciously and subconsciously. Um, so let's move on to the strategy overview. So basically it's gonna go down like this. You're gonna start by testing creatives, right? Then after you find a winning creative, you're gonna go into cold interest targeting because you have no data unless you came from Instagram, which this just makes it easier. Then you're gonna go into warm LLAs shortly after that. And that's when you're gonna start breaking even becoming profitable. And then you have hot LLAs, um, which is where you should have a lot of profit and then demos where you should be going into 20, 30K days. So um, creative testing, you should not be making any money whatsoever. This is just pure testing to identify a winning creative so that you don't force a loser creative to try to make it win. You actually spend the time and money to find a winning and create a winning creative uh, and then force money into that creative, which is just saving you so much money. It's just the dollar goes so much further when you do this. Uh, people that don't do this are seriously shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, cold interest targeting, usually not profitable um, unless you have an amazing ass product or great ads, usually not too, too profitable. 
Um, not for me, in my experience. Um, I'm not speaking for everyone. I'm speaking for myself. Um, but I could spend about one thousand to two thousand dollars in cold interest targeting, um, not profitably. So probably make back anywhere from you know two two thousand to two thousand five hundred, and you know maybe have like a above a one point something ROAS uh, in this stage because I really just don't have enough data. Um, and really when we start actually seeing more money come in is through the warm LLAs because now we actually are targeting people that have interest or look like people that have interest in our brands. We're not just targeting random people. We're targeting people that actually might consider. And then hot LLAs is where we target people that are actually interested and like actually would buy our product and that's when the profitability really comes in and then demos and no targeting is just when you have so much data um, that you can just target a group of audience a group of people and you already have so much data built up in your pixel thousands and thousands of purchases that facebook already knows who to look for so you just throw a shit ton of money into these demographics and you let it optimize and facebook will say okay you gave me an audience of 200 million people and i found out in the campaign level who i should be targeting and they do that because you have such enough such a big budget that it's possible to do that with no targeting because you have so much money that you're feeding it. It's not possible when you're doing $50 ad sets. It's only possible when you're, when you're spending a lot more money. So moving on, let's talk about creative testing in the video for a video. So this is the way you're going to set it up. Um, I like doing ad set level budget for creative testing because I want to see all of the exact same spend to the cent per test that I'm doing. So I'm isolating variables, um, and I'll explain this in a second, but I'm isolating variables one by one and then determining a winner. So I do website conversion, I'm optimizing for conversion, I'm doing ad set level budget optimization, um, so it's not a CBO. Uh, it's, they're all gonna have the same spend, so let's just say $5 a day, for example. Um, if CBO becomes mandatory, you can do this with a minimum spend budget, or you can set a rule to turn off all of the ad sets when they reach a certain level of spend. So say you set a rule for the campaign so that all ad sets shut off when each individual ad sets reaches $10 in spend or reaches a certain amount of um, you know view contents or impressions or, or reach. Um, so it's possible with CBO, I just, since it's ad sets still here, I'm gonna do it with ad set. Um, so basically this is the way it breaks down. You have the one campaign, the creative, campaign where you test creatives and let's just say three ad sets for now which you're gonna start with three because you have three videos right this is not you don't have to start with three if you have five videos that's better if you have two videos that's a good place to start um, but I'm just doing three for the sake of the example so three ad sets and each ad set is going to have one ad each and each of those ads is going to be different so that way one ad one ad set um, in one campaign. So one campaign, let me let me say that backwards, that's gonna make more sense. One campaign, three ad sets, three ads, one per ad set. And they're gonna be all different videos. So this way, if you spend $10 each per ad set, two days later, when you spend $5 a day, it's going to be very easy to, to determine a winner um, because one of those ad sets is gonna have better metrics and they all spent the same amount of money. Um, so you're gonna do, like I said, three ad sets. You're gonna target ePacket countries, or you could do T4. ePacket's better, it's gonna have a lower CPM. Um, you're gonna do automatic placements. You're gonna do targeting, but just none, keep everything broad. And then you're gonna have one single targeted interest that you think will work. Now the key is it has to be the same interest in all three ad sets. Otherwise we're changing multiple variables. Cause if you have three different interests in three different videos, we won't know why, what performed better. It could have been because of the interest. It could have been because of the video. So we're only changing one thing at a time. It's the video in this case. So keep the same interest for all three ad sets. Um, and then obviously one ad per ad set, each ad is a different video. So to summarize, now we have one campaign with three ad sets. Each ad set has a different video, um, but all the other variables remain the same. So we're gonna let it run for two days, spend five to $10 per ad set, as long as they're all equal. And then at the end of the two days, we're gonna compare the CTR, which is the, the click-through rate for the ad if people have an impression on it. The link CTR, how many people clicked the link after viewing the ad, which is a very important one, because the higher the link CTR, the better the ad was. You know, uh, The CPC, the cost per click, the ATC at the cart and the IC initiate checkout or the purchase if it generated a purchase. So the C link CTR is really important. The ad that generated the most um, at the carts or initiate checkouts or if it got a purchase and the ad that got the lowest um, cost per click. Now, so they're going to be mix and matchy. So 
Um, I would say the ones that hold the heaviest weight is the purchase, obviously, if it gets a purchase, but it's likely that it won't. The Lynx CTR and then the IC and uh, ATC that it drove. Uh, then you take the winner of those three after the two days and you move to the next phase. So I'm really lining this out easy for you guys so you understand. Um, so then we move on to the second phase of creative testing. So now we have a winning video, right? But we can still customize that video and make it better. So same thing as before, um, you could do this in the same campaign. I have a picture um, and it'll make, it'll make sense when I show you the picture, but same thing, uh, ABO campaign, three ad sets, everything is the same. You're gonna take the winning video from before and you're going to test both aspect ratios. You're gonna do a one by one and a four by five. Now, if you've already been testing one by one, you don't have to test it again, that wouldn't make any sense, but just test the four by five alongside. So get that winning creative and, and make it a four by five or re re image it. And you can actually do that with InShot. You can increase the size and make it a four by five aspect ratio. Um, and this way you test the aspect ratios and you see which ones are doing better. Um, if you have a four by five aspect ratio and a one by one you wanna test in the beginning, go for it. It's, you could do that too. Then you take the winning aspect ratio and winning video. We have two winning metrics now and we test three to five scroll stoppers. Scroll stoppers are the first three to five seconds of the videos. So it's basically what catches their attention, the hook. So you could change the wording, you could change the scene, you could change the actor, um, just change the first three to five seconds and test that winning ad with the winning aspect ratio with three to five different scroll, scroll stoppers, right? Same thing, let it run for a few days, two, two days, let it spend all the same amount and then take the winning scroll stopper. Now you can identify a winning scroll stopper by if it gets more purchases, which it likely won't, but if it drove more people to watch the rest of your ad. So you can do that in the Facebook ad breakdown. You could break it down by 25, 50, 75, and 95%. If the ad with, you know, a scroll stopper B just for some reason generated more 50 and 75% video of your watched because you got their attention, that's the better one. Um, then you take the winning scroll stopper and you test three to five ad copies, the actual physical text, three angles, three offers, three discounts, three attention grabbing headlines, um, just stuff like that, a test the ad copy. It's the same concept here, you know, we're doing this over and over again. Then you take the winning ad copy and you test three to five thumbnails, okay? So the first picture they see when they're scrolling past it. Um, so as you can see, we took Instead of just taking a video from a competitor or an Alibaba supplier, um, we have three to five videos. We found the best one and then we optimized that video like six times. So that video is literally like mathematically proven to perform way better. Just because we, through numbers and data, have optimized it six times before we ever ran ads with it. So it's imperative, it's fucking critical that you guys do this. Otherwise, you're gonna be forcing money into an ad that might not work. And I wrote here 10 days later and 150 bucks in testing and you have a way, way better ad that you will, it will save you way more money in the long run. Um, way better than just going with the first one you got. So it's imperative. Here's an example. Um, you can see T4, no targeting. Um, I would like to do interest targeting because no targeting, that's why I put interest. I did this at the time that I was running this, I wasn't doing targeting. Um, and you can see I have different aspect ratios here. I have, I, I brought it in because I didn't want you guys to see the name of the product. Um, but at the end of all of these descriptions, I have the different winning metrics. And as you can see, I just have the CTR here, but as you can see, I, this one has the highest CTR out of all of them, and it was a um, 4x5 aspect ratio, which I noticed is better. 4x5 has much higher CTR and link CTR um, because it just takes up more real estate on social platforms. So that's why you got to test because look at the difference. I started out with like one of these and they had a 5 CTR, and then we went all the way here and they have a 13 CTR. So obviously... There you go. Um, so then we move into cold interest targeting once we have our our um, good ad. So it's set up similarly. You're gonna have a website conversion campaign. It could be CBO or ABO. Um, I like to do $50 per ad set. If you're doing a CBO, it's the same thing. You just give the budget that, that budget. So if you have five ad sets, that's $250 a day. Um, if products, if you have a product and you're selling it for under $50, you could change the conversion window to a one day click something Gabriel taught me, it's worked well. Um, 46 ad sets per campaign when you're doing CBO. Uh, you're gonna target e-packet countries, T4, United States, whatever um, you wanna target. Uh, automatic placements, cause CBO will optimize for you. One single targeted interest per ad set. This is pretty common, pretty standard knowledge. Everybody knows this. You're only changing one vari variable at a time so that you can identify which variable works the best. 
two to three ads per ad set. Take your top winning metrics and play around. Usually the copy and the scroll stopper make the biggest difference. So play around with those things. So have three different ads, um, you know, and just change one thing about those three different ads. But those three different ads should be a very close relative to your top winning ad. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, I think I explained it good enough. Um, so moving on with a high budget, you can make three to five campaigns. So if you have more money to play with three to five campaigns with four to six ads, that's each $250 a day. Um, so I mean, if you're going to make, you know, four campaigns with five, five uh, interest each at cold targeting, you're going to be spending a 1000 a day, right off the bat. Um, so not everybody has that sort of budget, I do it that way, because I want to get data as fast as I effing can so that I can just move on to LLAs. Um, but try to make sure audience sizes are similar when you're doing CBO targeting, because otherwise CBO is going to prioritize one audience more than the other. Um, so try to pick interests and group them together with similar sizes. These campaigns will probably not be profitable and the ad sets within these campaigns will likely be profitable. That's something that's happened time and time again. Um, you'll notice that the campaign has a bad ROAS and the ad sets in the campaigns have good ROAS. Uh, the main purpose for these campaigns is to get data because you have none. Um, you want at least 2000. The, the next segment is warm LLAs, which are 95% video viewers, um, video view content at uh, LLAs and ATC LLAs. Um, you want at least two to 4,000 people to watch 95% of that winning video that you have. Um, and you need at least 500, Facebook recommends 1,000, 500 view contents, add to carts, initiate checkouts, or purchases to make a, a good lookalike audience off that audience. So warm LLAs are gonna be the, the view content. Uh, ATC is probably considered a hot LLA actually, but you need at least 500 um, view contents or ATCs to do those, and you need two to 4,000 95% video viewers to do those. So keep that in mind. Facebook recommends a thousand of any conversion event to make an LA. So I just told you guys that. Um, and here's an example of how it could be broken down. So this is a campaign here, um, US based 95% video viewers in the last 30 days, which is more than 4,000 in this case it was. And then within those I have five ad sets. And then within each of those ad sets, I have three different ads here. Um, one of them was a different aspect ratios. The other two had different copies. So that's the breakdown there. This is another example. Yeah, this was the interest example. So this was the warm LLA example. This is the interest example where I was targeting ePacket. Each of these have a, had a different interest, but I removed them because I didn't want you guys to see the interest because um, I might sell this product for Q4 and it might could give it away. I just don't want to do it. Leave me alone. Uh, moving on, warm LLAs, what are they? So a warm LLA is a 75% VV, a 90% VV, which is a video viewer. Um, visitor by time spent, time 10%, 25%, uh, Instagram engagement, Facebook engagement, view content. Those are warm LLAs. So when you make audiences based on these metrics and you create a lookalike audience, it's a warm lookalike audience. It means people that are actually somewhat interested in your product. Same setup, website conversion campaign, $50 per ad set dynamically to start off, one day click for products under 50, four to six ad sets, blah, 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 you guys get it. Now what we're doing lookalikes, we're not doing interest. So now we're doing percentage based. So. With lookalikes, this is what I'm gonna be testing from here on out before I tested one through 10%, 10 ad sets, I don't like it. As you saw in the last example was one through five, I had another campaign, five through 10. But now I'm gonna be testing this, zero to one, one to two, two, five, five, seven, and then seven, 10. That's five, uh, I would put that in one campaign. So I would do a, for example, a uh, view content in the last 14 days, look like audience with these five percentages, put them into a CBO campaign at a $250 a day budget. That's an example of a campaign I'd run. Two to three ad sets, take top money metrics, same thing as last time. Uh, if campaigns are very profitable after two to three days and have 15 to 20 purchases minimum, you can start raising the budget by 25 to 30%. Raising lowering budget should be done in two to three day segments. Honestly, I'm going to change that. Two to three days, kind of conservative. Facebook says 48 hours um, to let your ad run before making a decision. I like to give it 48 hours and then an additional 24 hours, which is three days, so that I can see how it runs on the third day after I had time to optimize. It's not really optimizing, but I'm gonna say three to five days because if you give it two days to like get down to as low as it can be for whatever you're trying to get, um, you give it another, you know, another three days to see how it runs in that time frame. That's a really, really good way. Um, to determine if you're gonna actually get the real number there. So not a lot of people have that budget. If you have less of a budget, three days is fine. Five days is better. Um, moving on. 
Here's an example of the warm LLA. Um, this was, I was running this a little bit ago. As you can see, 90 US per, uh, base, 95% video viewers, look like audience one through 2%. I was doing one through 5%. This was one campaign. I had another campaign going from five to 10%. Um, it's exactly what I just told you guys. And as you can see the conversion value here, I was doing a little trick though. I was doing a lifetime budget and gave the campaign a certain amount of days to spend in. And these were pretty profitable. Um, I mean, it was okay. My, my profit margin was, break even was 1.5 ROAS. So this one here, which generated the most amount of sales, um, was pretty profitable. And you know, this was, was pretty good because we had a break even ROAS of 1.5. And then as you can see, these ones here were not so profitable, these two, but that's why I turned them off pretty early. As you can see, they're spend $100, $40. I turned them off because they weren't profitable, but these ones were, and that's why I continued to let them run and scale them up. So. Uh, yeah, 3,000 spent to generate 5.7K. This was, uh, it's inaccurate. So we didn't average a 1.88 ROAS. It was probably about a two ROAS. Um, my stores, I've noticed that it's, it mistracks anywhere from 10 to 15% um, every single day. So 10 to 15% um, of 5,700 or 5,800 is um, $100 to $150 for every thousand. So that could be an additional 500 to um, 750, I think, dollars um, that this is not counting in for. So it was an average of two something ROAS and it was pretty profitable. Um, but yeah, just so you guys know. All right, moving on. Hot LLAs, hot LLAs, ATC and purchase. You want, again, at least 500 conversion events in the last whenever you're trying to make an LLA for. Um, Facebook recommends a thousand. So that's just that. You just have to keep spending money until you get those to move up the LLA ladder. Um, same exact thing. Uh, website conversion, CBO, $50, um, and then the same exact percentages. Two to three ads, it's all the same. If campaigns are very profitable, blah, 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 I already talked about all of this. Another thing I wanna mention before I move on to the next slide is, instead of just killing a campaign, lower the budget. Because I've noticed that when I lower the budgets of campaigns, usually the next few days they perform really well. I don't know if that's because Facebook's like, oh, you're about to shut off the campaign, I'm gonna lower it. Or because it's just, I don't know, but that's something I've noticed. Instead of killing campaigns right away, I would lower the budget if they're like scaling campaigns, right? This is if you have campaigns and they have been consistently making money for weeks and then for some reason they stop, then instead of killing it, just lower the budget gradually and see what happens. Um, mini scale. So if your campaigns have some very profitable and consistent ad sets, you can cherry pick those ad sets with similar sizes and put them into a separate campaign Again, $50 per ad set. Requirements, 25% net profit, minimum 10 to 15 purchases per ad set, and profitable over the last three to four days. That's the minimum requirement to cherry pick an ad set and throw it into a campaign. So for example, if you started three campaigns and each of them had five interest, and there was one interest or two interests in each of, campaign, each of the campaigns, so six total interest that were 25% net margin, 10 to 15 purchases and profitable over three days, you could take those six and throw them into a new campaign. And then now you can start raising the budget on that campaign. So I would start it at the same level, $250, but theoretically it should perform better. Usually it actually does. And you could scale those campaigns kind of quicker. Does that make sense? And the thing is with LLAs, um, they're easy because LLAs have the same sizes if you're doing one country or if you're doing the same country. So this works out pretty well, um, cherry picking LLAs and throwing them into a new campaign. Um, note this, duplicated campaigns or ad sets do not bring over previous data. When you duplicate a, camp a campaign, it's that campaign is not going to have the same stored data as the one that you duplicated from. So it's like a whole fresh new campaign um, and it's going to target, a, a, you know, like it's just not going to have that data. It's not going to be optimized. So keep that in mind. Retargeting. Um, so you should have two retargeting uh, retargeting campaigns, CBOs, ten to twenty dollars per day. That very largely depends on how many people you're sending to your website. You start at ten to twenty per day, and again, just like everything, you scale it if it's profitable, um, and as long as the frequency does never frequency does not exceed three, which means that's how many times people are seeing your ads. So you're gonna have a hot and a warm campaign. This is the breakdown, a hot campaign. You're gonna have um, website vi visitors in the last seven days, uh, targeting those people, excluding um, people that added to cart and purchased in the last 30 days. And you're going to have people that added to cart in a separate ad set. Uh, these are two separate ad sets. People that added to cart in the last seven days, excluding purchasers in the last 30 days. Warm is gonna be IG and FB engagement in the last seven days, excluding website visitors and purchase. purchase. 
and then you're going to have a 95% video viewers excu uh, excluding website visitors in the last seven, purchase 30, and Facebook IG7. So just set it up that way. That's one of the ad sets there. I got that from Gabriel. It works well. I'm just I'm doing it right now. So yeah. Demos and no targeting. So the way that this works is you're going to be targeting no targeting. Uh, engaged shoppers, men, women, age groups, financial income, um, and it's the same thing. Website conversion campaign, $50 per ad set, and instead you're going to break it down like this. 18 to 24, 25 to 34, so on and so forth, men only, and then 18 to 24, 25 to 30, you know, all the women only in their own individual ad sets. You're always going to be uh, excluding purchase 30s. Don't you always want to exclude people that purchase because you don't want to show your ads to people that purchase because they're going to believe, be the ones that leave the nasty comments um, because they're getting your ads and you most likely haven't shipped out their order if you're going to target them the next three days. Um, so just exclude purchase 30s in your ad sets when it comes to this. Um, two to three ads per ad set standard. Here's an example of what that looks like. Um, okay, so when to kill. Uh, or scale. So if you start it, if you start an ad set and spend two extra break-even costs for purchase with no sales, uh, I would kill it. Uh, wait 48 hours if possible because it could likely get a purchase. Maybe if it doesn't within 48 hours and you spent two thousand two two thousand two extra your break-even CVP, uh, kill it. If you're getting sales but you're negative, wait 48 hours and then an additional 24 hours to make a final decision and then kill. Unless you're trying to get data. If you are break even or even slightly negative and you're just trying to build up your data, just let it run. That's just what I do, right? It's just what I do. So you don't have to do it. If you want to just try to find cherry pick profitable audiences and spend $5 a day, then go for it. You can waste your time doing that. Um, but I'm not going to do that. And I don't think people should either. That's why I'm making a YouTube video on it. Um, if you're breaking even, don't kill or scale, just monitor it. Um, if you're slightly profitable, wait 72 hours. And if you're profitable across the three days, you can very slowly raise a budget. As long as you're getting the purchases and as long as it has a consistent base of purchases. If you're profitable, F, again, wait 72 hours and make a decision 20 to 30% increase. This could be done campaign or at set level. If you're profitable at the campaign level, same thing. Um, if you're and if it's for an ad set, if you're doing ad set level scaling, same thing. Uh, your feedback score. So you could change the delivery time to your feedback score to eight weeks. Facebook is going to send out a survey to someone after they make a purchase, and it's going to ask how their experience was. Um, change the delivery time to eight weeks so that you can give yourself as much of a margin as possible to get the product out to them. Uh, don't have shitty products, and fulfill your orders. Right. If you have a good manufacturer and you fulfill your orders, you have decent shipping times. The feedback score is not a problem. So don't have shitty products. Fulfill your orders. And then this is the link to the feedback score where you can change the uh, the delivery time. All right. Last slide, guys. I know we're breezing through this. Um, remember, these are the last tips I'm giving you. Um, remember, your ad sets have no chance of optimization in the beginning if they're not getting 50 conversions per week. So don't even think about optimization until you're giving it enough of a budget to even allow it to optimize, if that makes sense. You can't optimize in the beginning unless you're doing a stupid budget or unless you're getting a million sales somehow. Um, we're not worried about optimization until we have higher budgets. Okay. Duplication does not transfer data. Remember that LTBs are working really well currently. Yes. Fuck low budget. Make money, save up, and come back. I hate, I absolutely hate when people ask me, how do I drop ship with a low, like a low Facebook ads budget? Like, go get a job, save up money, have income, spend money on Facebook with the purpose of learning the ad system and the purpose of getting smarter and getting better at it. Um, don't just come back with $100 and, and you spend $30 and you're like, oh, I haven't gotten a sale. Like, no shit, you haven't gotten a sale. It's not going to work that way. Um, sometimes you spend thousands of dollars become, before becoming profitable. So, Stop being a little scared, bitch. Go and get money. Go and get income. Come back when you're ready to play ball. And yeah, that's kind of harsh, but I'm serious. Uh, you need a minimum of 10 to 15 purchases per ad set to, to determine if it's decent. One lucky purchase means nothing. And the ROAS that you get, I mean, this is the biggest clown thing I've ever seen. And I've, I've, I've used to do it and I'm guilty, of course, but when you get one purchase and you show like 18 ROAS, like there's no way in fucking hell that that's going to maintain an 18 ROAS. People that that flex that it's just a very lucky first purchase and it's going to optimize and it's going to not be that profitable. So one lucky purchase means nothing. 
uh, you want three to five days of consistent profitability. Good days and bad days average out. Uh, you guys can calculate the margin volatility between those days, like I told you. So if you have, if you're going down to like a 5% margin and all the way up to a 15% margin in between is going to be a 10% margin. That's your mean margin. So stop trying to scale so fast with no knowledge. You will fucking fail. Okay. Slow and steady wins the race. I see this all the time. Somebody that's been doing Facebook ads for three and a half weeks that has made a hundred dollars a day is like, Oh, it's time to scale to 10 K days. Like you're not going to fucking scale to a 10 K day. If you haven't ran Facebook ads, you have to slowly, slowly build your way up and ask anybody that's really good at Facebook ads right now. Um, if like they never, it, it was always like a slow buildup, like, okay, they hit a 1K day, then they hit a 1.4K day. And then like a week later, they hit a 1.8K day. And then next month they are hitting 2K days. And then, you know, three years down the line, they're hitting eight, 10, 12, 15K days. And then it's always building up slowly and slowly and you're reaching the next level. You're never gonna go from a 1K day to a fucking 20K day. That's not how it works. This shit takes time. Uh, and stop trying to scale so fast because you will go negative and you will fuck like you will get you will fucking go negative and you will fail so slow and steady wins the race uh and yeah and now build a foundation so the, the thing i mentioned earlier in this video is what i'm currently doing is you want to build a foundation for your business you want to have it streamlined you want to have it automated when you're doing a few thousand dollars a day or you know underneath 10k a day at that point you're getting in a lot of orders uh, and you just want to make sure everything is automated. You want to make sure your VAs are ready to go. You want to make sure they're getting emails. You want to make sure that your manufacturer is sending out products on time. You want to make sure that your customers are liking the product. You want to make sure that everything is just ready to go. You're building a strong foundation. And most importantly, you want to make sure that you have a good, profitable, consistent ROAS, a good, consistent profitability factor and right now we are getting new creatives to try to increase the ROAS so that we can break through to the 20 and 30K days because you guys saw that the 5.7K day I had, I could probably get to about a $10,000 day and that's when I would probably start losing profitability. So I'm working on creating an exceptional creative right now um, so that I can increase the ROAS. I'm working on increasing the ROAS so that I can scale past that 10K day and still be profitable to the 15, 20 and so on and so forth days. So building a foundation is having a strong, sturdy bottom line, right? Um, you're untouchable and there's not a lot that can go wrong so that you can slowly and slowly scale higher and higher every day because nothing's gonna come crumbling down um, because you built a foundation. So build your foundations uh, and good luck. I really hope the best of luck to all of you. Um, I'm posting all these videos. It takes me days to make these. Yes, I get paid through ad revenue and it's a good amount of money. Um, but more than that, I like to help you guys. I get DMs all the time of people saying I made 100K because of your videos. And that's fucking awesome. Um, people have inspired me to make videos on YouTube like Graham Stephan. And I have inspired thousands and thousands of people like he has. And, and this is the positive in life is inspiration inspires people to do things and then those people inspire people and it's just a giant loop of of people becoming better versions of themselves and i'm part of that loop graham is part of that loop people i've inspired are they're going to go on to inspire other people and then they are part of that loop um so i really really do wish the best of luck for all you guys i really do um and just if you become successful, send me a DM and, and say, hey, I appreciate it and go and help out other people and pay it forward. So yeah, pay it forward. And finally, before I end the video, since I gave you all that shit for free, you can give back to me by doing two things. You could either text, well, you should text level up to 94253. Do that right now. Text level up to 94253. It's a, my subscription um, my texting subscription and I have only sent out one text so far, but it was an insanely valuable um, document about product research and you guys, it was just really, really valuable. Anybody that was on the subscription service, like a lot of people really liked it. They said it was fire uh, and I had zero unsubscribers after I sent that. Um, so that literally proves how good it was that not a single fucking person unsubscribed when I sent out the first text. So make sure you text level up to nine, four, literally free value. I'll be promoting my videos on there when I release a new video. Um, but it's just going to be free information for you guys. And we're going to be able to connect on a little bit of a closer level. Uh, if you want to set up a call with me, I don't have a course. Stop DMing me. I don't have a course. 
Um, maybe in the future I'll make a course. I'm completely open to making a new course in the future. For now, I don't have one. If you want to get in contact with me, send me a DM at Seb, S-E-B-B on Instagram or set up a call. There's a link in the description. It's all automated. People will will talk to you and see what you want to need and then they could you guys can close and pay and do all of that and then all we have to do is show up at a time that we agreed on. Um, so it's it's all pretty much automated. If you want to set up a call with me, there's a link in the description. Click that link, uh, set up a call. I can help you with Facebook. I can look at your store. I can basically do anything you want um, and maybe get you from $500 a day to a thousand or from a thousand to $5,000 a day or whatever. I can help you in some way. So make sure you check it out. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I'll have a link to the slides in the description as well. If you guys want to do that, if you want to go through these slides yourself. And other than that, I, like I said, good luck. I hope you guys the best and I will see you guys all in the next video. So until then, right? Take it easy guys.